Good evening, everybody. My name is Xavier Lebrecht. I'm with Zachary Pajet and Jacob Wojciechowski, and together we are Team Takeover. Our capstone project is a cellular pump controller. But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about our sponsoring company. So Takeo Comfort Solutions is a leader in hydronic solutions, as well as being in the industry for nearly 100 years. And with this experience, they've grown to be one of the most trusted names in controlling the flow of water. And they always strive to make improvements and stay competitive in the market. And we believe our project will do just that. So in a very simplified view of our best anticipated outcome is the cellular pump controller will be able to remotely monitor and control Takeo's ver um, vertical turbine pump. So our project motivation. Mainly, this product will be able to be a huge step for Takeo into the IoT business, as well as convenience the lives of many, those being mainly the agriculture and mining. As you can see in these applications, pumps are not too easy to access, and it's a time-consuming process to be able to monitor and control them. So by doing this, people will take, save a lot of time as well as money. So key features to our best anticipated outcome would be able to monitor and control the pump. So we have an array of sensors that we're able to get data from, from the pump and send it to our CPC. And then for, from the CPC, we're able to control the VFD, the variable frequency drive, which ultimately controls the pump speed. And then that will be, and then there's also a set of visual indicators to help easily debug issues with the system. We have a web application that this is where the users will be able to interface with the pump and see the parameters, see the data that we're receiving from the pump, as well as make the necessary adjustments to their pump. But this web application connection to the CPC would not be possible without a cellular connection. So that is where, within the CPC, we have a cellular module. We use the Nimlink Skywire cake for our beaker bone microcontroller that connects the cell tower and then ultimately, ultimately the internet, which allows us to get that connection to the web application. And I'm going to give it over to Zach to talk about our hardware achievements. So this is a uh, diagram of our hardware requirements for this project. So the power, except for the uh, battery backup system and the communication hardware, were all given to us from last year's team. So that gave us more time to spend on the, the sensors and the motor control. So the sensors, as you can see, range anywhere from temperature to uh, pressure, and that's where you'll be getting all your data for actually monitoring the system. And then also your motor controls ran through a VFD, which is a variable frequency drive that controls the speed of the motor, also the status on and off. So I did say before that the power was given to us, but the only problem with it was it was with off-the-shelf parts. And while off-the-shelf parts are good for prototypes, uh, it, it becomes very expensive when you mass produce a product. So to combat this, we created an AC to DC converter as well as a buck boost converter to uh, take our 24 volt AC input from our transformer and turn it into 24 volt DC to uh, power our sensors. As well as over here, we have our uh, voltage dividers for our sensors and our uh, quick plug old terminals that uh, will connect the sensors to the PCB itself. So this took a lot of time for us to do because we used uh, PADS, which is Takeo's PCB tool, to make all these schematics. And um, we had no past experience with PADS, but it made it easier for them uh, if we had done it through that. So um, with a lot of help from our TDs and a lot of uh, time spent, we were able to get this done. Next, we have our sensors. So th as I said before, the, this is where you're going to get all your data and monitor your system. So the sensors normally output a, a 2 to 10 volt range, um, but the BeagleBone that we use can only accept up to uh, 1.8 volts as an input. So we had to pull it through a voltage divider to drop that voltage down. So now, um, once the BeagleBone accepts this voltage, it'll take the, the tick values and turn it into human readable values. So for example, the flow sensor will be, um, instead of a voltage range, it'll be in feet per second. So this, this did take a little bit of time to do, considering all the research we had to do on the sensors themselves. But once we got one sensor working, it was uh, really rinse and repeat for the rest of it. So lastly on our hardware is our, our VFD. So we used MCT10 to program our VFD um, to get the analog input controls to change over to what we want them to do to control the actual speed and frequency of the motor. So um, usually these VFDs work with a 0 to 10 volt scale, just like the, the sensors did, but our um, vehicle bone can only output 3.3 volts. So we had to change the, the scaling to 0 to 3.3 so we can actually change the frequency correctly. So this was a very difficult task for us to do as well because uh, we had no prior experience with a BFD at all e or MCT-10. So it took, uh, once again, a lot of time and a lot of help to get this done. So now I'm handing it over to Jacob to talk about the software. 
Okay, well the software this semester was mostly focused on both the embedded and the cellular and the AWS, which is a middleman between the cellular pump controller and the actual web application. So first we have our microcontroller. We chose the BeagleBone Black, and the reason for that is it runs its own web server, which lets us able to use Node.js as a way of interacting with the analog pins to read data, along with being able to send that data up to AWS. And what AWS does, so first off we start with a thing. So AWS, we make it a thing because it can be anything. So for us, it's a virtual version of the pump controller. Inside this thing is something called a shadow document, which holds just a series of variables variables and values. So you have desired, the desired value, I want the pump on. The current value, the pump is currently off. And the delta value would be if the pump was on and it updated AWS saying the pump turned off. AWS can then in turn interpret these values and then send out an error message if something isn't going correctly. And that's what this flow diagram detects for here. Obviously we haven't been able to finish everything so far. The major focus for second semester would be the web application along with actually being able to send cellular data over the cellular network. It's currently communicating to the modem correctly, but we're not able to actually send values. Uh, as the user interface is depicted right here, so this is what the user would see inside the in the field if they actually went to go. They got an error message, and they have to go look to see what might be wrong and how to fix that problem. Finally, we have to actually incorporate the PCB and print, and act, verify and make sure everything's working correctly. Overall, we'd like to thank everybody for helping us this far. Thank you.